Hey guys, so I was just organizing some uh, gear, getting everything, um, making sure I still have everything, didn't lose anything on my last trip. Uh, I'm also getting stuff together for my next trip I'm taking this season, which is going to go to Mexico. I'm going to climb a couple of volcanoes there, and then I'm um, going to head over to Puchero Chico for a couple of weeks for some rock climbing. Uh, I'm pretty psyched, this is my first time climbing in Mexico. And definitely first time in Chico, so I hope I'm really getting excited for it. This is the big trip of the year. I decided I would take the time to make a video that I've been meaning to make for a while, which is what I do, everything I have in my harness for mountaineering, or my mountaineering everyday carry. Uh, I did a video on my rock climbing harness, what I carry on my rock climbing harness for every day for guiding and uh, recreationally climbing. And so I want to do one for my mountaineering harness. The big difference with this, and it's kind of the same with my rock harness, is that I kind of use, or it's kind of a modular setup where on my rock harness I may add a, well it's a little less where I may add or subtract, it's kind of most of the stuff there stays there for the entire time. With mountaineering, since you're on glaciers, that kind of changes throughout the season. So whereas I would have a picket in early season, I may substitute that out or also add in ice screws depending on the glacier whereas in late season it gets pretty icy on the glacier and uh, a lot of the snow melts or goes away and leaves you just the bare ice of the glacier it's what we call a dry glacier and so in this case of all the stuff I had added in here I would carry a couple ice screws and an ice screw clipper to clip those onto my harness but this is the stuff that I carry with me for the entire time, no matter what. Um, if it's early season, late season, mid season, I always have this stuff with me. So let's get into it. All right, so first thing I'm gonna talk about are harnesses. Uh, I got two harnesses with me. Um, this is the BD Kuar harness. Comes in a little bag. Well, they all do. This is just your standard glacier climbing harness. Has two gear loops. And then um, you can see it folds open like this so you can put it on with boots, crampons, or whatever you have. Um, I like my, some of these non-technical mountaineering harnesses don't have a belay loop, but I like having a belay loop with my harness. And so I made sure to get one that actually has a functional belay loop. But um, I kind of don't like this harness. I used it for a while, but uh, it just, I kind of like having a full harness with me with full array of gear loops and um, and I even, I've used this harness on some technical routes, but I'm just not a big fan of mountaineering harnesses. It's just the jockstrap of mountaineering world. So this year, I've been using this all season, I got this, this new harness that BD also came out with. It's called the Vision. Yeah, the Vision harness. Uh, this thing is just ultra lightweight. Uh, people use it for ice climbing and uh, super fast light missions where you're really not expecting to sit in the harness that much because it does kind of get old to sit in this harness. It's really thin. You can see it has four gear loops and a little ribbon. This is basically a ribbon to just act as a haul loop. And then it also comes with four ice clipper slots. This Kuar has, um, I forgot to mention, this Kuar does have two ice clipper slots right next to the gear loops. Anytime I'm non-technical mountaineering, I only use one ice clipper because I only ever have like about two ice screws on me. That's only uh, however many I brought. However, if I'm doing something like the North Ridge of Baker, which has more technical stuff, I'm going to have a bit more ice screws with me. I may choose to have, or I probably will choose to have two on this harness. I also would use this harness on uh, other sort of more technical routes, like maybe uh, the West Ridge of Forbidden. I've used this on that. Um, one thing I kind of don't like about it is the gear loops compared to some of other harnesses. You can see how, uh, there we go, these are thinner than these ones. And so even if you have a lot of gear on these more, uh, more technical style harnesses, the gear loops don't bend. They keep that same shape, which I really do like the sort of mushroom shape that they have. On these ones, if you get one or two cams on here, they immediately just sort of fold, and then I kind of don't like that as much. It's a bit of a pet peeve of mine, and I am slowly getting over it, uh, but that is, that's always sort of what comes to my mind <laughs> when I think about using this harness. But it is equipped to handle technical climbing, so anything in Boston Basin, uh, Mount Shuxon, 
any technical routes on Baker or Rainier, this is a great harness for that. And anytime you're in the alpine environment where you're not expecting to fall, this would be great. Um, I am a little worried about bringing out on routes where it has a lot of repelling, but uh, you know, I may just get over that. Just put on some padding. So yeah, that's the harness part. Uh, moving into the technical gear, uh, simplest thing I carry are locking carabiners. I carry three lockers with me. These are the nice pair carabiners I've really been liking a lot, uh, especially on technical routes and anytime I'm guiding alpine stuff because they really fit munter hitches nicely. And when you alpine guide, you use a lot of munter hitches. And so they just sort of fold into these carabiners really well. And I just kind of like them. Um, I'll carry three uh, locking carabiners with me, th three free locking carabiners, where they're on my harness just as locking carabiners. Um, I do carry more lockers than that, one of which is my... Um, the, I think this one's called the Gridlock. This is Black Diamond Gridlock Magnetron. And the cool part about this compared to other Magnetrons... I mean, um, you can see it has this little loop right here. And so the idea with these, many people will use them for belaying. I've used it for belaying before where when you clip it onto the belay loop of the harness, there you go, it just gets hooked in this little, in your belay loop in this little loop right here. And then you can hook your belay device onto this part and then it won't cause any cross loading of your carabiner. Now, I didn't buy this specifically to belay with it because I've fallen, I've taken lead falls on many cross-loaded carabiners before and I'm still alive. Um, but this serves a different purpose. This way I can clip this into my belay loop of my harness and only have one locking carabiner there. Because the current industry standard is to have two carabiners on your belay loop when you clip into the rope. Either being two locking carabiners of the same size a non-locking and a locking carabiner of the same size, or one triple action locking carabiner. Now this is sort of getting into kind of another topic, but the reason why you want to have two carabiners is, the, one of the main reasons is to prevent cross-loading of your carabiner on your loop. And so uh, this carabiner, by virtue of this, prevents cross-loading, and by virtue of being a triple action locking carabiner, that's one, two, three, if uh, if anyone's wondering, I didn't know if these were triple action for a long time, but by being a triple action locking carabiner, I can have one, and by having this little loop, I don't have to worry about cross-loading. And so that's why a lot of the guides are moving to this style of carabiner. Uh, other carabiners exist where it's like more of the pair type, but it has a little bar across the side. I mean, like, as long as it's triple action, then that would be fine too. But uh, it seems like... Um, in the AMGA professional world, a lot of people are going to this specific style. Either way, it's uh, it crosses off all the ticks that I need to have one locker, and so that's why I have this. And this pretty much just lives on my belay loop the whole time. Uh, I also carry around one quad sling and one non-locker. Uh, with that quad sling for crevasse rescue, I can do any number of things with this, equalizing two points, um, attaching myself to the rope, you know, making a more intense anchor, I can do any number of things with a quad sling. Along with anchoring and crevasse rescue, I'll carry another non-locker with two uh, bundles of cord. I think this is 18 feet, it's usually 18 feet with me, of 6 mil cord. And uh, these are just so useful and they'll help you out a lot with any sort of crevasse rescue. And so uh, I could use one to equalize two pickets together and then the other one to haul someone out with or just for an example, make an anchor out of whatever. But uh, it's nice to have two. I also carry my usual, uh, again, on the lines, like the, when we're non-technical mountaineering, the only thing we're worried about is crevasse rescue. And so that's why I have my micro traction. And I actually carry this with another non-locker, a small D locker. And uh, I just keep them together like that because anytime, this is a very critical point, so you need to have a locking carabiner and having a nice small one like this. It's compact, it's light, and uh, and then that way it keeps my other three locking carabiners free for whatever I need. Actually, other four locking carabiners need for what are free for whatever I need. Along again with Crass Rescuers, I have a tid block. 
This is just for my, when I make a three to one or a more complex hauling system, it's just easier to work with than um, a small little loop of cord. And then speaking of small little loop, I have a hollow block and then a double length sling on another non-locker. And generally, as far as non-lockers go, uh, like I have the three free lockers right here, and I try to have four non-locking carabiners with me. I'm actually, I'm short of one on this video if you've been keeping count, but I normally would carry another non-locker just jangling around along with all this other stuff. <laughs> but anyway, so I have a sterling hollow block and then a double length sling. Usually I don't use this specific double length sling. I'll grab a Dyneema like this double length sling and I'll bundle it up like this so it's a bit smaller. Uh, but uh, any sling works, I mean. And so I'll carry those two together because, again, they serve a bunch of uses. If I need a rappel into the crevasse for whatever reason, then I have this thing. Well, I have this whole setup that I would need to rappel down. And so they're just very important. Other cases, uh, I don't carry these with me all the time, but I will if uh, I feel I need them or if I know the situation. Uh, it's not bad to have a blade device. A very simple ATC would work really well. Dealing with smaller glacier type ropes, a lot of times I'll bring the Alpine Guide with me and then sometimes I will include that with another locking carabiner. But uh, these things have a lot of uses, like if you do have to rappel down into the crevasse, it'd be nice to have one of these and then ascend back out real easily. And um, yeah, they have a million uses, so why not bring one? I wanted to show you this guy's real fast too. You may have seen this in my other video, or maybe not. Um, this is kind of my, you could say, grab and go crevasse rescue kit. This is what I would use for if I'm climbing something like, uh, well, pretty much any technical route where I'm already carrying a couple cams and a couple alpine draws. And so that gives me a decent amount of raw materials. I'll always have my lockers with me, my free lockers. But just by having all those non-lockers with me already and other slings and stuff, I sort of condense my crevasse rescue kit down to this carabiner. This is just a really wide oval carabiner. I keep my third hand and my Dyneema uh, double length runner. Again, not this one I usually use. And then also my micro traction and my tid block, all on this one carabiner. And this lives on the back left loop of my harness. And uh, usually with the, some alpine objectives, you're not even having that much of a glacier. So this keeps everything together. I have two usable items, and it's kind of just these two extra things that I'm not expecting to use. And then by that same token, and this also depends on if I'm guiding or if I'm climbing with a friend, but a lot of times I'll only bring one bundle of cord and one quad sling. And these also live on the best or the last uh, left loop of my harness and I never use them usually throughout the entire Alpine objective because a lot of times we're just stacking a couple cams together or doing a quick Alpine anchor and equalizing it or using train belays. And so it's not common to bust out the anchor materials, materials and make a, a full on anchor. So if I'm on this, like I use this on Torment Forbidden Traverse with a small glacier at Torment, the small snowfield at Forbidden that we went on so I was prepared for a crevasse fall or something bad like that, but it, I didn't have, I didn't bring a bunch of extra stuff with me because I just didn't need to, I already had it. And that's another thing is on technical routes, I leave this behind and then just go with two carabiners if I need to clip into the rope for that small crevasse or small glacier section, just because this is like really good when you're only climbing like East Ridge of Baker or any of the guided routes on Rainier. This is really nice because you're always gonna be clipped into some part of the rope and never really hard tied into it. But with the other mountains uh, where you're only gonna be in to the rope for a small period of time, this kind of loses its exact uh, usage. So I ditch that and go with two knot or two uh, carabiners, a locker and a non-locker or a locker and a locker. I almost forgot to mention that uh, sometimes I will bring a loop this is like, this is bigger than a third hand. So that's kind of like normal third hand size. And this is what it is compared to the hollow block. It's maybe twice as long, but this um, little loop of tied cord can come in handy for a number of things. I know some people like to bring uh, 
foot loop, or uh, what do they call them? The leg loop and the arm loop. I think that's the, the most common term around here for them. And that's, um, so that way, uh, when you're ascending out of a crevasse, you use like a small loop uh, for the harness part, and then you have another loop below it that you hook your leg into. So that way you stand up on the rope and then slide this up and then you ascend your way out of a crevasse, a usual crevasse rescue technique, which um, which is like, that's a great way to get out of a crevasse. I just tend to improvise a bit more. So generally I would use like my double length runner as the, the top friction hitch and then I could use a quad sling or any of my cords to make the bottom loop. And so um, I think I have another video on how to set my, how I set myself up for glacier travel. If I don't, then I'll make one soon. And you can see, like, I don't really add in, I don't attach those friction hitches on just in case I fall in a crevasse. If I fall in a crevasse, then I'll take care of it all then. I know it will be a bit more annoying, but um, it's, it's already hugely unlikely that you'll fall into a crevasse on these well-traveled routes. And so I'm just gonna save myself a little bit of work in the long run versus uh, a saving work if I happen to fall into a crevasse. There may be times where I do set that stuff up beforehand, but uh, not really in the areas where I'm at right now. Another thing that I'll choose to bring along occasionally would be like an alpine draw or one or two. And that could be because it's late season, I'm going out with ice screws. That's usually when I'll have an alpine draw with me. Um, just because, again, if you're already carrying around the extra gear, that means that you're probably going to go to running blaze a bit more, or you could just need the, the basic tools that that gives you. They could just come in handy. And so sometimes in late season, I'll add that on to my everyday carry too, but that is sort of adding a decent amount of weight along with the screws I've been bringing. They do come in handy quite a bit. Sometimes you, just a single length runner and a non-locker is all you really need. Also, if I do happen to fall into a crevasse, I can use that single length for my waist prussic and then use a double length for my foot prussic. Well, guys, thanks for watching my video on mountaineering everyday carry. Uh, please leave a comment, and I'd like to see what you bring along with you. If you do anything differently or if you have any other tools you bring along, then please leave a comment. I'd love to read them, and then I'll see you guys in the next video.